Alright YouTube, so I told you guys I was going to pull off these valve covers because I wanted to check to see if um, they had used new gaskets and they did so I was very happy to see that um, they didn't try to throw these valve covers over the old gaskets but when I pulled the valve covers off I was happy about this part that I saw gaskets but I was not happy about everything else I found. Look at the amount of sludge that's in this motor YouTube. Oh, I hope it picks it up. This motor is filthy. The sludge is ridiculous inside this motor YouTube. Look at this. Are you freaking kidding me? Look at that. This happens from not changing the oil. Now, just before I picked up the car, he said, you know, they, they, they just changed the oil, which is fine. That's this little clean oil sitting here on top. See, clean oil, old oil. This comes from the neglect of not changing your oil. And I'm going to be honest, man, this kind of pissed me off because now I got to clean all this up. You know, you know, I guarantee some of these lifters are sticky. Um, this sludge is just ridiculous. And hold on a second, YouTube. Let me, all right, let me write this off my hand for a second. Um, so this is why I can't take, ever take the word when other mechanics do stuff. Because all mechanics do not have the same integrity. They don't do the same work. The, the goal of a lot of mechanics, I'm definitely not going to say all, but the goal of a lot of, a lot of mechanics, I don't even want to call them car guys, is basically to make as much money as they can for as little effort as they can. See, and this is why I do what I do. And I give ridiculous deals, but I'm, I'm promising you that's going to change. Man. My deals are definitely changing because as, as great a deals as I give... I'm still not sure everybody's truly appreciating how hard I go for them. So, absolutely, I let me tell you something. The kind of work I do in here, the kind of hours I put in here, my prices are nowhere near where they should be. So all that's changing. Because every time I got to go and fix something like this, now I got to clean all this out. Because... I, I, I could cover it back up, right? Like the other guy did. But that wouldn't be right. I cover this up. This car's going to make noise. You guys heard this car when it was running. It sounded like Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. And that's because I'm sure some of these lifters are sticking. The sludge is crazy. I got to clean out all these rods. I got to take... I mean, it's... it's And it's both sides. It's not just this side. Hold on, you two. We're going to the other side of the car. Hold on. This side is the same thing. You see this? You guys really see this? Look at this. Now how did the guy put on the covers and ignore this? Now, I'm not blaming the owner. Because the owner told me he's not a car guy. He's not a mechanic. That's why he paid the other guy. So I understand all of that. But the other guy should have brought this to his attention. He should have said, listen some sludge in here we need to flush this do something nah he just put the covers on to change the oil and went home we, we I can't take that kind of stuff you two so anyway now I gotta spend more time cleaning this out cause all these passages and stuff have to be cleaned you can't let sludge build up you know when, when all of this stuff, when these push rods and stuff get sludge built up on them, and in them, you don't get oil. Your motor's going to lock up. Your motor's going to knock. It's going to tap. You're going to get a lot of noise out your motor. This, this motor was noisy already, but now I'm starting to see why. So I'm hoping that by cleaning the heads and then running a flush through it, I can get as much of it in without because truthfully the proper way is to pull this motor out pull these heads out pull everything off and just go in take everything back off and clean this motor 
because I honestly I don't even know what the what the bearings are gonna look like especially on the crank bearing so we're gonna see we're gonna we're gonna do what we can I'm trying to not let this get to be too expensive for them so I'm trying to I'm gonna start with a clean I'm gonna clean it I'm gonna flush it I'm gonna clean all of these I'm gonna retorque everything because I'm not even too sure about everything I mean some of them are a lot tighter than others see this one barely moves this one all the rest of them are like this so I don't even know you know so I got to retorque everything and I got to pull them all off I'm gonna have to clean all the push rods because if there's sludge inside oil you see how small that hole is oil has to come through there to keep all of this lubricated but if that sludge is in there which I do not doubt you're not gonna get the flow that you're supposed to get so again more work see YouTube it's hard being G7 YouTube blame it on my parents man they gave me a little integrity taught me a little bit but YouTube I'm going crazy over here I'm really really not happy about this because this is slowing up other work I gotta do but this is why I didn't want to just throw those headers on because throwing those headers on and then still having to go through and clean all of this, I would have messed up all the work I did on the headers. So the heads may have to come off. Um, the oil pan has definitely got to come off because when you get all this stuff clean and all this stuff starts falling through, I try to use a vacuum once I break everything up and clean it to, to pull it out to keep it from falling in. But you know, sometimes things do go in and you can't believe that Everything that fell into the motor is going to come out through that little drain plug on the oil pan. So once everything is down, I still have to remove the oil pan to clean the sludge out the bottom of the pan. Because I guarantee you there's sludge in the bottom of that pan. But this is just simple lack of maintenance. Now I know the owner didn't do this because he just had this motor put in. So I don't know if this is the motor that came with the car or if this was a motor that he bought. But this motor has actually been neglected. So they put the pretty stuff on it. You know, the owner bought new intake and valve covers. But his mechanic should have told him. He should have pointed this out. Um, absolutely. So now, I got to address this. I mean, this is just ridiculous. You know, I'm, I'm really not happy about this. But... Look, I'm, I'm, I'm upset like it's my car, but I told you, I take all these jobs personal. My name is on every car I touch in this shop. If I leave this car, if I let this car sit like this and leave, and this thing starts rattling and chitty, chitty, bang, bang, what you think they're going to say? The car just left Grand 7. I'm the last one to touch it. So it's like the car leaves sounding like this. It's something they're gonna think it's something I did and it's absolutely not. That's why I do these videos So people know the whole progress on your car from start to finish And what I'm dealing with over here so people also understand why I charge what I charge because Work I do is ridiculous in here, but all right YouTube I got work I got to pull all these off now and clean everything clean the head clean everything and um Hopefully, when I pull all this stuff off, you know, I'll be able to um, get the majority of the sludge from up here, and then I'm going to tackle the bottom, clean everything, soak it, and then put it all back together. All right, YouTube, I'll cut you guys back on. All right, YouTube, so I've already loosened this one. Let me break this one loose. What I'm trying to do is remove the rocker arm and the push rods to get an idea of how bad they are. Now I can do this with an impact, but I prefer to do this kind of work with hand tools so you can feel it in case something isn't right. Because snapping something at this stage in the game gets expensive. Hold on. Hold on a second. 
like it YouTube. Let's see what we got here. Ah. Grimy. See that? That's why these have to be pulled off and cleaned. Let's pull out this push rod. Oh, the oil's down there. Not really sure. Hold on. Let's see what this other one looks like. Hold on one second. I hope the lift is good. Okay, let's see this one. Ah, uh, YouTube. I need a vacation. You guys think I should go on vacation? Any suggestions? I want to go somewhere where I can see cars, but I don't have to touch them. I'll go to Cuba. You know, that's where all the classics are right now. Cuba. All right, hold on. Yeah, you see it? It's sludge and everything all down these push rods. Hmm. Well, YouTube, you notice this one didn't have any oil running out of this one. This is why I have to pull and clean each one of these out. That one had some oil in it. This one didn't. So I got to go through all of these and clean them out inside and out. So you can't even see through it. You should see light at the other end. So that means this rod is probably clogged. So, all right, YouTube. I got my work cut out for me. Let me get to work. I'll cut you guys back on. All right, give me a minute. All right, YouTube, so I just finished cleaning the first push rod. Um, you see, it's staying cleaned up nice. Uh, after I degreased it and soaked it and did everything else, I hit it with a very fine um, scotch Bright pad, the green one actually, just to get any surface rust off of it, make sure everything is nice and smooth. You don't want to use anything aggressive because you don't want to put grooves into it. You just want to clean it up, make sure everything is nice and smooth like it's supposed to be. Um, this is the old one. This is the one I did not clean yet. The reason I have the light turned like this is because I want you guys to be able to see. Hopefully I can show you. Hopefully I can get it right. There it is. See the circle of light coming through, YouTube? See? See? When you clean these rods and you clean the inside and out, you should be able to see light all the way through. On the dirty one that I haven't cleaned yet, you won't be able to see. I can't catch that same light because this one is clogged. So that's something that you have to make sure. It's not just about wiping down the outside. You know, like I said, I had to clean it, make this thing nice and smooth again and uh, also soak it and clean the inside. So before you put these things on, other than making sure just the inside and the outside is clean, you also wanna make sure that these things are straight, that they're not bent, you know, roll them on something flat and make sure that um, they're rolling nice and true. All right, let me get to the rest of these and I'll cut you guys back on. I made a mistake, YouTube, I said, surface rust on these rods but it's not it's actually uh burnt oil see it's just old oil that's just burned on here but the green scotch bright pads will take it off because you see it let me see you get a camera you see it that's burnt oil but this is just like it's just aggressive enough to where it'll take off burn oil you see it'll take off the burnt oil and leave it nice and clean and ready for its close-up all right let me finish cleaning this thing up cut you guys back on
Uh, YouTube, it's been a long day. After a couple of hours with wifey's toothbrush, <laughs> a bunch of rags, ton of cleaning products, automotive cleaning products, that is, the greases and such. Uh, I got this. Woo! Man, if you guys don't see the difference, do you see this? Look how clean this is. Are you kidding me? You could eat out of this head right now. Do you understand how much work I put into this head today to get it to look like this? Look at this thing, YouTube. But hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me go to the other side. Hold on. Give me a second, YouTube. Walk with me. All right. So, as you see on this side, it's nice and clean, too. But, the beautiful thing, the highlight of my day in cleaning this motor was discovering these numbers. So, hopefully you guys will be able to read them. If not, it's 140-14416. Now, to some people, that number means absolutely nothing. To other people... They know exactly what that number is. So let me let me fill you guys in. So the casting number that's the casting number for these heads. And pretty much what that number will decode to is to let you know that these are high output heads. Now, that's a good thing. These are performance heads. These heads will put in Camaros, Firebirds, um, they were even in some some Caprices, some boxes out there got these these heads in them too they were they were put in a few cars but these are very very good heads i mean they're they're good carburetor heads you know they came in i think 82 i want to say 86 because around 87 that's where a lot of chevy started getting to be uh fuel injected but they were very good heads and they're still pretty much sought after from people who are not um Jumping to, to do the LS swap, but if you still running the carb motor, they're still looking for these heads So because these are performance high output heads um, It gave great compression and things like that. So it's gonna wake this El Camino up But as much sludge and everything that was in here It was it was robbing this car of what this car could do. Now, that's a little 305. It's not a race car, but you could Bring a 305 up to get some decent power out of it. So actually, that's what I'm doing now. I'm, I'm not, <laughs> I should say I don't plan on opening this motor to do any performance mods internally. But on the outside, um, you know, we're adding headers. He's going to be running straight pipes, straight dual pipes. We got a posi rear. Uh, also, hold on. Also, you guys know, well, I guess I, I told you that I was going to consider switching this out. I'm definitely switching this out. I'm taking all the computer out. This, this car is going to be straight motor like it should be. And I'm saying that to say that the first part came today. So between finding the number and also getting this. Now, this is an Assault Racing Distributor. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. This this just... This El Camino is not going to be a street racer. It's going to be a very nice cruiser, but this thing is beautiful, YouTube. Look at this thing. So I'm putting this in because that's one of the components I need to convert this car to full motor. Um, there's, it's more than distributors and cars. There's a lot of things that have to be addressed when you're converting a car from carburetor to... When you're converting it from computer control to non-computer control. Because everything, every sensor, every everything that the computer controls, if you're going to remove that, you have to now be able to set that up to run without it. So some components get changed, some things get rewired. I mean, it's, if you want to do it right. A lot of people will cut corners. A lot of people will just slap on a carbon and distribute it until it's been converted. But if they don't do it right, you're going to damage other things, such as the transmission. The transmission has to be adapted as well. Some people will just pull out and put a non-computer controlled transmission. You can do that, but you don't have to. The way I'm converting this car, 
he won't have to. He can keep his transmission, won't lose overdrive, won't lose anything. Come on, man. Why does anybody else go anywhere else? I don't understand. I do not understand. Help me out with that, YouTube. Anyway, let me get to work, YouTube. Man, look how clean this is. Guys, remember I was digging the sludge out of here? Look at this. Oh, my God. Anyway, let me get to work, YouTube. Now, before I go, what I was going to do, I was going to close out this video by... Letting the motor run and tightening all of the rocker arms. Now the thing about it is when you're when you're when you've pulled off the rocker arms and things like that and you have to tighten everything back up the old school way, which is the way I do it, because it's been tried and true, and I mean it's the way they've been doing it for years. The old school way is to adjust your rocker arms while the car is running. Um I I don't know if I could trust any anything where they're saying oh just go ahead and tight these to 50 or 75 or whatever torque numbers they're going to give you i don't trust that the way i know to do it the way i've done it the way i've been shown to do it is do it while the car is running and um and it works out better it works out better no problems no issues uh, but the thing about it is, in order to do that, especially with the car running, I have to leave the valve cover off. So I don't want to throw on the header because there most likely is going to be some oil running out because now everything is clean. So oil is going to be coming out these passages on all of these uh, rock arms. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to throw the manifold back on uh, just to get all of these tightened up how it should be. And try to get this motor sounding good. And then once I get everything tightened where I need it to be. Then I'm going to start stripping out all the computer control stuff. And I'm going to get to this wiring over here. And, and start get start to take care of cleaning up this wiring. So the next time you guys see this motor. Um, these wires. All these wires will be gone. Um, whatever is not needed is going to be pulled. And uh, the headers will be on. The valve covers will be back on. And hopefully the conversion will be done. I mean, I guess it depends on how long it takes for the rest of my parts to come in. I'm still waiting on a couple of more parts for the conversion. Uh, but hopefully they should be in any day now. And then I can finish up, do the full conversion on this. All right, YouTube. Keep watching. Next video, the car will be converted. All right? Grand 7 Auto Works and New Cars Suck dot com.